G'day guys, are you thinking about coming to Albania for a holiday? Are you already in Albania and thinking how the heck do I get around this country? Um, this video is a bit different to my usual one, so I'm going to run you through the different ways of getting around and to and from various different places in Albania. So stick around, I'll tell you some of the ways to get around and I'll also tell you some of the scams and pitfalls and just basically rip-offs uh, that you can uh, be aware of and learn how to dodge. So, like I said, this is a little bit of a different video, this one, because it's going to be more of me talking to camera. There's going to be some uh, footage of uh, where I've been and so on. But basically what I wanted to talk about is the three or four different ways that you can get yourself around in Albania. Um, and the, depending on uh, your level of fitness and all that sort of stuff, one thing I would have to say is most of the larger cities in Albania are actually really, really walkable. Um, even Saranda, um, and I'll talk about some um, walkability in a little while, but um, everything's walkable within reason. Um, that said, there's also taxis for your local trips as well as your, um, um, your larger distances. There's buses and you can also hire a car. So I'm going to go through all of those options and, uh, and, and talk you through it. So the first of these would be walkability, and this is probably the, the most basic uh, one to talk about, because at the end of the day, most of Albania, uh, they, there's a lot of hilly areas in Albania, but typically if you go into the hilly areas, you're a hiker and you're gonna be fit and you're gonna be ready for that sort of thing. Um, if you're a, an average tourist or an average, even slow traveler, most of the time it's gonna be reasonably walkable. Tirana, for example, is an exceptionally walkable city. Um, and it's not that big, in all honesty. So um, to get around all the places you're likely to want to go around in uh, Tirana, you can do that pretty easily um, under your own steam. Um, even this, the same in uh, Duras. I mean, Duras, the, the challenge with Duras is it's a long city. So if you really wanted to walk right from the northern uh, beaches all the way down to the end of the southern beaches, that's going to take a bit of time. But who's going to do that? Um, it's definitely a, um, a, a walkable place. Even Saranda, like I hinted earlier on, uh, Saranda is a really hilly place, um, but it's also really small. So even if you're staying up on fourth or fifth row, which I was, um, it's still not that hard. I mean, I'm a big guy. I, I, I'm carrying far more kilos than any healthy person should be carrying. I still managed to do it reasonably well. I used to joke and say it's a five minute walk to um, the, the Esplanade, no, 25 minute walk back. But hey, 25 minutes, a bit of exercise. So don't be worried about that. The only thing I would say is if you have mobility issues, definitely Saranda is going to be a problem to you because um, there's a lot of um, dodgy footpaths, but also there's a lot of work being done in Saranda at the moment. Certainly while I was there, a lot of the footpaths were closed um, because they were ripping them all up and putting bigger and better and wider ones in. So six months from now, next tourist season maybe, it might be completely different. But yeah, it is hilly, and so if you've got mobility issues, that might be a problem to you. The same with Duracaster. Duracaster, again, is a, is, is a very, very small place, and it's very, very hilly, um, but it's walkable. The only thing I'd say about Duracaster is the cobblestones. They're probably the hardest cobblestones I've ever had to walk on. They're really, really uneven. Um, so again, if you've got mobility issues, you might need to think about how you're gonna get around those cobblestones. So that's walkability as a general thing. Um, but if you're gonna get around to more distant places, how are you gonna get around these more distant places? So you've got all sorts of options. So as far as taxis go, it's probably first of all, there are no rideshare apps as such, but there are taxi apps. Um, so taxis are fairly common. The taxi app that I used was called Speed Taxis. I, I chose it because it's got a kangaroo on the logo and I thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. There is another one, I've forgotten its name. I'll do a screenshot and stick them here somewhere um, to show you uh, the apps. Um, but it's an interesting thing with taxi apps um, because the taxi app will give you a price. It'll be a cash price because cash is king in Albania. Um, but some of the taxi drivers will still put their meter on and the meter price will be higher than the taxi app price. So you gotta watch that. And I, I found this the first time when I was traveling from the airport into Tirana City. Uh, the taxi app said it was gonna be 2,500 lek. But when I got to my destination and looked at the meter in the cab, it said 4,000, which is way above what the taxi app said. 
So I, I said this to the driver, I'm going, well, the app says this, so that's how much I'm going to pay. And he looked pretty unhappy about that, to be honest. So I actually met him a little bit away towards it, and I gave him 3000 um, But yeah, just be careful. Make sure that you lock in. The app says this is how much it's going to be. You're going to be okay with that, because if they're not, then you might have a problem at the other end of the, uh, the journey. Um, the thing to caution you about, though, is there's a couple of things with taxis. There's the, the unofficial taxi, um, and it's, it's hilarious. It's like, picture a dodgy guy in, uh, somewhere in some dark alley pull, walking out, open up his going, you want to buy a watch? It's kind of the same thing with some of the unofficial taxis. And when I was walking through Duras on the way to uh, get on my bus, or I thought I was getting on my bus, I'll tell you about that in a minute, um, to, uh, to go to Duracaster, this dude just steps out of a little laneway and he's just this shoddy looking, dodgy, older guy who goes, you want a taxi? And I'm thinking, yeah, no. <laughs> so you be careful, they're, all, they're easy to pick because they don't actually have any taxi signs or a sign, uh, like a little thing on the roof or anything. They're, they're, they're not actually taxis, they're a random Joe who wants to make some money and God knows how much you're gonna get ripped off. Um, the other thing is, as far as rip-offs, Saranda. Saranda needs a special note uh, as far as taxis. My God, those guys are rip-off urchins. Now, when I first came into Saranda, I knew how hilly it was. I was exhausted because I had a really long day that day. I came in on the bus and it's really hard to tell on Google Maps what the scale is sometimes. And you think, oh, how far is it between point A and point B? And I had my luggage and I'm looking at the footpaths and I think they're really dodgy looking footpaths. So I thought, oh, what the hell, I'll catch a cab. So I got off a bus, I went to the taxi driver, told him where I needed to go. Anyway, got into the taxi and off we went. Two minutes later, we arrive at the destination and he hits me for 1,500 leg, which is pretty expensive in Albania for, uh, for such a short distance. I mean, even 1,000 would have been a push. For, it was literally about 800 metres. I could have walked there if I'd known it was that close. So just be careful in Albania, there's no, um, sorry, in Saranda. There seems to be, talking to all the other expats and uh, travellers there, there seems to be no taxi fare below 1,500, but it definitely steeply goes up as you go along. Buses. Ah, Albania and its buses. So most main cities will have um, a reasonably uh, reliable uh, intercity bus network. Um, really small ones don't, um, but even, even Saranda had an intercity bus network. The, the bigger issue is when you're going to um, longer distances. So, for example, going from Tirana to some other city destination. So, inter-regional buses, the, the challenges with them is they're usually run by really, really small bus companies, like two or three people, um, and they might have two or three buses maximum. Or often they're just one guy and a, and a bus, and uh, he he runs his uh, business. So that means that they can be a bit unreliable. Um, they're also seasonal. So if you're in the um, the, the shoulder and off peak seasons, um, there's going to be less buses. Problem is the top table won't change. You if you go online, there's a website that I'll put a screenshot to right here. Um, that is um, one of the more commonly recommended um, uh, websites to go to. It will have a timetable and it won't vary based on the season. Um, and I found this out uh, the hard way. Um, and so you can't trust the timetable. The only way to really know where the bus is, when it's going, all that sort of stuff, is to go to the bus terminal. But that's the next problem, bus terminals. They're not really obvious, they're not really well signposted, they're not really clear. Literally, for example, in Duras, the Duras Central uh, bus um, area, it's, it's not a terminal, it's not a bus station, it's an area. It's literally the old car park to the old railway line that hasn't existed for decades. So <laughs> you literally, you just go past this big car park and there's a whole bunch of buses. And that's the bus terminal. Um, so it's a bit tricky, but the problem is most bigger cities like Duras and Tirana and some of the other bigger cities, they've got two bus terminals and different buses will go from different places. 
I'll tell you all about the scam I got on that in a moment. But you've got to be really careful. Again, that website that I mentioned up here, it doesn't necessarily tell you about the second bus terminal. Um, so you've got to be really careful. Buses, as a rule, are, are pretty well priced when you get to them. So what am I talking about as far as the, um, the, the scamming and so on? So I'll give you a story about traveling from Duras to Jiracasta by bus. So basically I, um, I went online, I looked at the timetables and I could see that there were like three or four different buses every single day of the week, seven days a week, from Duras to Jiracasta. Great, excellent. So I had a look and the website showed that it went from the, the bus terminal that I just mentioned, which is just basically a great big car park. Um, I'll show you a screenshot of the uh, the map that they give you, and it's right next to the port in Duras. That's called the Duras Central Bus Stop. Cool, that's only like eight, 900 meter walk from my apartment. So off I drive, down to the bus stop. Get there, and this dude walks straight at me straight away. He spots me, and I'm thinking, I've seen a few other YouTubers say that people come up and offer you help. So I'm like, oh, cool, this guy's gonna offer me help, that's nice. Wrong. <laughs> So this dude walks up to me, he says, where are you going? And I've said, Duracaster. And he goes, no. What do you mean no? And he goes, no, no buses to Duracaster. And I go, what, do you mean there's no buses today? And he says, no, there's never any buses to Duracaster. The only way to get to Duracaster is by taxi. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. This is like a two or three hour drive. Uh, I'm pretty sure there'd be a bus. And I know that the website says there's multiple buses. So anyway, this guy's getting there and he's going, no, 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 it's only possible. Used to be buses, no longer buses. And he's trying to tell me that they stopped running buses. And I'm thinking, well, maybe this is actually believable because we are in the end of the shoulder season. But I'm still suspicious as hell. And he's going, I can take you to Jiracaster. I'm going, taxi driver. And again, you want a taxi? That type of taxi driver. He was dodgy. And so if I had gone with that, I would have had to pay probably 200 odd Australian dollars. A taxi ride because that's what the kangaroo app said it would cost i go no no i'm not doing it and uh he, he kept pushing and pushing and pushing and i'm going mate go away so off he goes and i watched him and as he walked away he literally tag teamed another guy like they didn't do the high five as they walked past but they may as well have so the other guy comes up and he goes don't worry about him where are you going and i go jurycaster and he's going there's no buses to Jurakasta. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, seriously? I saw you just nod to each other walking past. But he goes, come with me. And he starts walking. And I'm like, oh, do I really want to do that? Um, but I followed him. At an appropriate distance where I could say, no, 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 I haven't actually agreed to go anywhere with you. So anyway, I followed him and he's gone into a tour operator's building. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is a bit weird. But turns out what he was doing is he, he had really bad English and so he was going to someone he knew could speak English well and he's gone blah 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 in Albania to this guy and this guy's looked up at me and he's gone he can take you to the other bus terminal where the Duracaster bus runs and I go, ah, okay so the biggest scam of trying to rip me off and take my uh, taxi all the way didn't work so now this guy is offering to take me to the other bus terminal um, which he did but I said to him, all right, how much? And again, he said 1,500. And I should have picked up the queue. There was a young woman sitting at a desk just on the other side of the room and went, like that. And I'm thinking, but I was so tired and so annoyed by this stage. And I'm going, yeah, all right, 1,500, whatever. So we did. We went, we went to the other bus terminal, which actually does even look like a bus terminal. It's even got a little food area in it. So this one actually looks like a bus terminal. And again, lots of buses to Barat and to all these other different places, uh, Bloor and all that. So cool. I've rocked up and the guy says, bus is going to be here at one o'clock. It's, it's 11.30 at the moment. Uh, okay, so the timetable is completely wrong. This, this bus terminal is not even on the timetable, but the buses should have been more frequent than that. So anyway, no problem. Sat down, had a drink, had something to eat, and I waited. Then the guy comes up and goes, your bus is ready just before uh, one o'clock. And I'm going, well, I haven't seen a single bus come in and out. So, what? Anyway, we start walking. And we walk across the car park. And we 
we go out of the car park and we go over the highway and now we're walking down the shoulder of emergency lane which is like person width wide down this four lane highway and I'm thinking what the hell is happening here and then we stop and there's two or three other people standing there as well and we're standing there and the guy makes a phone call and he goes oh bus is running a little bit later we'll be here in five minutes I'm thinking, we're literally standing in the traffic. There are trucks going past about that far away from my face. I'm thinking, this is insane. But anyway, a bus does turn up. And I get on the bus, and away we go. It's one of those sort of, I don't know, 30-seater, 25-30-seater um, uh, buses. And it was fun. Um, it, was, it was a rough old ride. Um, we had a little pit stop along the way, and we got to Jericaster. So... The trick, the, the scams were the guy that tried to rip me off and tell me there were no buses at all. But then the other guy who told me, all right, there are, there, there really are buses, but I'll have to take you to the other terminal. And he charged me 1,500. The guy at the second terminal said to me, how much did the taxi driver charge you? And I said 1,500 and he laughed. And he goes, nah, even 1,000 would be too much. And I'm thinking, okay, so, and that was actually about a 10 minute drive in a taxi. So if you think about it like that, what I said earlier on about surrender, massive difference. So anyway, my point is, be really careful about the buses. They do exist, they do operate. You get everything from a big 50 seat of coach all the way down to a 12 person little, I don't know, what would you call it, a transit van or something. Um, so um, they do exist. Uh, they're very extended. Some are really dodgy looking. Some are really nice looking. But don't trust the timetable. Don't trust the website. Go to the bus terminal. Ask someone at the bus terminal. And then you'll be fine. The buses are fine. Um, the driving's fine. But be careful. Now the last one to talk about is hiring a car. I'm actually having a, se a separate video about hiring a car. But it is a really good way to uh, to get around um, if you've got an international driver's license. So stick around on the channel for that and subscribe to the channel and watch out for uh, uh, notifications that that video is coming. All of that will be in the next video. Click like and subscribe. Really appreciate any support you can give as far as liking and subscribing the video. Share it to your friends and family. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video.